Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams. Uh, welcome to this bonus video. Uh, bonus in the sense of um, definitely not not required in our set of videos that are building an advanced GNS3 uh, NSC4 lab, but uh, just another little added value optional video on how to add VLAN tags into your GNS3 topology here. So guys, I gotta get something off my chest. Uh, this is the third time I've recorded this video, and it's not because things inside here weren't working. It's my recording software. Uh, I went ahead and said, screw it. After, <laughs> screw it. I said, forget about it, and I uninstalled it. Okay? Uh, I installed the new version. I recorded another video um, doing everything all over again, and then <laughs> I realized that uh, Windows 10 broke it. So I had to go and apply some registry fixes, and hopefully this is now recording. Now, if this does not record, you guys are not getting VLAN tags in GNS3. I'm not doing it again. I don't care how much I like you guys. Okay, I'm lying. I'll probably do it at some later date, but enough ranting. I had to get that off my chest. So here you guys go. So for the longest time, I could not get VLAN tags to work in GNS3, and after lots of trial and error, I figured out the magic of making it happen. Now I don't think this is how it works in real life when you're using the the FortiGates that have physical interfaces on them. Um, in fact I haven't heard anyone complain about making VLANs off of those physical interfaces. Um, but here there is some some tweaking we have to do to get them to work with the VMs. So um, for starters here, here's a quick topology I, I threw together. And by the way, uh, these are using all of the machines that we've imported in in the previous videos. This is why I like GNS3. This is why it's so helpful to have this kind of tool. So you can quickly build up little topologies. These are all using trial versions or free uh, operating systems, okay? And you get to get your hands dirty. But our goal here is right now, and I'm gonna turn on the interfaces. Uh, we have port two and port one. Port one is just natted to my internal network. So I got an IP address there even though we don't use it in class here in this demo. But port 2 just had a basic, you know, 10.0.1.0 slash 24, just so we can configure this thing. So um, my goal is to essentially get this switch right here to participate in trunking, okay? Uh, and then have different interfaces tag different VLAN traffic. So essentially one switch and our goal here is to create an out of band, meaning not on our production network management VLAN, and then a couple of VLANs for things like sales or marketing. So um, so guys, I apologize if this feels a little wonky while I'm doing it. That's why I'm recording it for you. Um, because it, it just feels a little bit weird, but let's just get to it. Um, I feel like every time I record these things, the videos get worse. But anyways, I'm going to just jump right into it. So here's that Windows 7 machine that we imported in earlier. Isn't that so cool? So cool. I have the vocabulary of a four-year-old. So cool that we have drag and drop deployment here. So um, here we go. Let's get to our FortiGate. So 10. Nope. 10. Dot zero, dot one, dot two, five, four. All right, here we go. All right, so once again, this is just a drag and drop free license, FortiGate, good for 15 days. All right, but let's get some VLAN tagging. All right, so I'm just gonna get right into our interfaces and let's take a look at what's happening here. So this first one, port one, came from DHCP. All right, and then port two is just some IP address I picked temporarily so I can configure all of these VLANs. So we're actually gonna remove port two here in just a moment and actually use port three as our LAN interface. Uh, a couple other things, VLAN ID is not natively on the GUI. You have to right click the tabs to access that option right down here, bloop, okay. Um, I bet you a lot of people didn't even know you can do things like errors and and uh, yeah isn't that cool traffic moving along roles okay anyways um, so the first thing you have to do 
when you make VLAN taggings in this environment is make yourself a soft switch. So in that soft switch it's going to have the actual trunk port itself, the physical ports, but also all the sub interfaces that we're going to create using VLAN tags. All right, I know that sounds a little bit wonky. Um, now if we were in a real production network using physical equipment, uh, the Forta switch, which is managed down here with Wi-Fi and switch controller, makes VLANs pretty intuitive, um, pretty easy to do. So I don't have a Forta switch. If you guys want to send one to me, I'll make videos all day long with it. But right now, I'm, I'm limited to these virtual machines. So, um, so let's go ahead and do it. So let's go over to Create New Interface. And this interface is going to be a, not VLAN, but a soft switch. There we go. I'm going to give it a name. Junk in the trunk. Get it? It's a trunking port. Okay. Um, <laughs> our interfaces. Now, if you notice here, one and two is not listed, and that's because those two are already assigned IP addresses and are in use. So I'm going to use port three, okay? And I'm just going to leave it quad zero because if someone tries to access port three using the native VLAN, which is that that's all physical interfaces do, they will not be able to communicate with the FortiGate, and that's what we want. So I'm just going to hit OK here. So once that commits, you're going to see the logical soft switch software switch down here and now we can start making our vlan taggings we're going to join them to the software switch and uh, the best way that i can parse it out i can dissect it out is and and maybe everyone knew about this except for me uh, but the vlans have to be in the software switch or the broadcast traffic doesn't pass through them now i've tried to like play around with turning on like uh, layer 2 forwarding on these interfaces i'm going to simply say no don't do it. There's too much of a chance of uh, weird layer two switches happening, uh, not switches, loops happening. Um, this has been pretty steady. So, all right, let's go ahead and create our VLANs. So the first one is going to be that out of band management interface. So I'll call this one, very clever, management. I'm going to leave it in junk in the trunk, our soft switch give it a tag of 10 all right and then just use some unrelated IP address for our FortiGate and because this is gonna be accessible by our admins I'm gonna put some access here that I normally wouldn't okay and I'm also gonna turn on DHCP server just to make things easier for me so here we go there's the first one Give that a second to think and as we come down you you see our vlans starting to populate down here so let's go ahead and make the one for what was it sales okay all right so i'll just call this sales and this is going to give a tag of 100 and an ip address of 10.0.2.254 with the slash 24 and this one I'm only going to do ping to test connectivity, which in my opinion is fine on the internal side. And a DHCP server for convenience. All right, so that's number two. Ta-da! Now let's go ahead and do the last one, which was marketing. Now marketing is going to have a VLAN tag of 200. All right, so there we go. See, I'm putting them all on the same soft switch. And I'm just going to call this uh, marketing. And I'm going to give it an IP address of 10.0.3.254 with a slash 24. And once again, only ping access and DHCP server for convenience. All right. Okay, there we go. We have our VLAN set up. All right. Good times, good times. So uh, what I'm going to do now is unplug port 2, oh, I love GNS3, and plug in port 3 into Ethernet 0. Now we are not done yet. We still need to configure this switch here to be a tagged switch. So here we go. So I'm going to double click on that switch. 
And uh, this is why I turned on the labels right here so we can see that the one that's going to be acting as the trunk port is ETH0. So we're going to go to ETH0, you double click to load up the settings, and we're going to say, you know what, keep the VLAN tags. That's how you make it a trunk port. We'll hit add. And then ETH1 is going to be VLAN 10. So we go to ETH1, port 1, and we add a 10. Now we're going to leave it access interface. And the reason why, once I go ahead and hit add, so packets going into the switch are going to get tagged with 10. Then leaving E1, they're going to get ripped off. That's how VLANs work, right? Our end devices usually do not care if there's a tag or not, all right? But they're going to be preserved here, and that's exactly what makes this a trunk port. And as you guys saw with my configuration, there's nothing explicitly that we have to do than just assign VLANs to make that a trunk port on the port gates. So, uh, all right, so here we go. There's Ethernet 2. So, sorry for the dinglings, guys. I keep forgetting I can't click down there while I'm doing this. I'm going to hit Add. And let's do the last one here for number three. All right, hit add. There we go. Looks good to me. So our tags should be on. And uh, let's go ahead and, and see if it works. So let's start with our Windows machine here. All right. So uh, hopefully I can't access anything on this FortiGate anymore because I'm on a completely different physical interface and a VLAN interface. So uh, let me go ahead and go into my command prompt. I'll do an IP config just to show you that I'm still on the 10.0.1 network, but now I'm gonna do an IP config release. All right, and an IP config renew. If all is right with the world, we should get a 172 number. Ah, oh, look at that guys. Wonderful! It worked! Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So, um, and we should be able to ping our gateway too. So, 172.16.1.254. Oh my gosh, there's my FortiGate in all of its glory. Now, in the GUI on the FortiGates, uh, it only shows the encrypted protocols to manage the FortiGates. So, even though HTTP and Telnet are supported, you can't see those in the GUI you can in the command line. Now, these trial versions of the FortiGates, you can only access them using HTTP or Telnet, all right? I think you can SSH into them, but whatever. So real quickly, before I test out my new interface here, I'm just gonna hop into my FortiGate real quickly. I'm gonna log in, I'm gonna do a config sys int, then do a show. You can see my physical interface is there, and oh, check it out. There's all of my, my trunk ports, my VLANs, my sub-interfaces, all right? So as you've noticed, I didn't have the option to put HTTP there. So I'm going to say, uh, let me move this up a little bit. I'm going to say, edit, management, tab completed that, set, allow access to HTTP, HTTPS, uh, SSH, and I already did ping. Nope, I didn't do ping, and Telnet. All right, only in a lab environment, only in a lab environment. So, all right, now that we've done that, I should be able to get to the web page just fine using the new out of band, meaning not accessible from our production network management interface. What? Come on, guys, that is cool. So, while I am here, I might as well complete it and go up to my. Um, network interfaces and take off port 2. We're not using port 2 anymore. That was just there temporarily for us to configure it. So, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, quad this out. So, all right, turn off DHCP, bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. Okay, now port 2 isn't gonna be a, a risk anymore, so. There we are. All right, awesome. Good time. So let's go ahead and see if the other ones worked. So here we go. Now these are just virtual PCs. All right, you gotta turn them on. And they're just little PC simulators that are good enough to, to get an internet connection, 
to maybe do some uh, resolu DNS resolution requests, uh, DHCP, so on and so forth, some trace route. Uh, very low footprint though, so they hardly take up anything on your virtual environment. In fact, running all of these machines, including the Windows 7, the FortiGate, and these two machines, I'm barely using 1% of my CPU and 10% of my RAM, so not too bad. So, But let's go into the sales machine, all right, and let's type in DHCP, and hopefully we'll get an IP address from the sales scope. So there we go, discover, offer, receive, accept. There we go, or request. All right, awesome, that's what we wanted. That was our sales IP address. So we'll ping the gateway just to confirm that we have connectivity, which we do. And if this was an actual PC with a web browser, you would not be able to get into the GUI. Or you can't tell that into, or SSH into the FortiGate. And that's what we wanted. We wanted the uh, management to be completely separate. Uh, let's see if marketing worked. All right, so DHCP. All right, discover, request, accept. Dora. Dora. Oh, look at that. Oh, it worked, guys. It's not great. Like I said, it was one of the few videos that just worked from beginning to end, of course. The video recording software crapped out on me now this is like the fourth time total in the last two weeks but all right guys there you go now uh, it'd be up to you to do the routing between these things to do the permissions using firewall policies to get them to communicate maybe later on someday I'll record a um, a uh, video on how to use zones to simplify management especially across multiple trunked uh, switches so but definitely not not today I'm so burnt out I don't think I'll ever record a video ever again but I will for you guys so um, so there you guys go so that is how you use VLAN tags or VLANs in GNS3 in our 40k topology now I recorded this as a separate bonus video because I am not going to be using these in our test lab. Now, why? Well, because the the actual NSC4, to the best of my knowledge, I did take it a while ago, uh, doesn't really dive too deep into it. And also, our class mentioned VLANs. We don't actually use them. So just to keep things simple, I'm going to ignore the VLANs unless explicitly requested by one of you guys. Uh, but hopefully you found that informative uh, because it took me a minute to figure out how to make those work in GNS3. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right. Take care.